Oh, what's that have to do with anything? Oh, the Scottish fever's getting me down. I need some chips. That's why it sounds so bitter and annoyed. It's what I get the emotion in. I can't stop the words from tumbling out of my mouth. It's, it's because I love you, Ethan. I gasp and clasp my hands over my mouth, but it's too late. I said it. I don't think I even really understood my own feelings until now. Well, I sure don't understand anything else. But Ethan says nothing. So the silence is chilling. Feeling unsure, I decide to press on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you slut. We are always working so hard. Yes, we've established that. I, I admire you a lot, Ethan. I just... I want to support you so you don't have to strain yourself. More silence. I'm, I'm about to try break it when Ethan finally speaks up, but his reply isn't what I expected. Uh, those are pretty words, aren't they? There's tension in the air. I've never heard such harshness to his tone, even when he was insulting me. I feel a chill down to my core. Ethan? You women sure say things you don't mean. You know, I'm probably gay and into heroin. <laughs> how? How can you say that? I mean, everything I said, I got... Enough! His voice is so rough and broken that I'm shamed into silence. And do you know why I have to work so hard at this job? It's for my wife and kids. It's true, I have to pay my school expenses, but there's no, there's no school cost. This much on its own. Well, really? actually, it does. Cost, well, this is a beautiful, this beautiful country they live in. Obviously, Belgium. Yeah, where Pierre wants to go over the border to France, but never has because he has no pants. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. Somehow, I already know what Evie is about to say. It's not going to be pleasant, but I need to hear this. I, I need to know. Two years ago, I had a girlfriend. She was like you. Her bright, hard working, kind of stupid. Uh, she wanted to be a doctor, but then she fell out of a window because she was carrying the plates. <laughs> she ended up at medical school for the medical bills. I had to get credit, sort her out, and I decided to help her out, and incur a lot of debt on her behalf, and then she died. She got the clap. And now I'm on my own, doing my own thing, because she had the clap, you see what I mean? I don't mind. I mean, she'd have appreciated it, and she loved me, even though she had the clap, the stupid cow. She promised that once she's in medical school, It'd be her turn to support me, I didn't much care for that. And then she dumped me anyway. It hurts to hear you talk about this woman he once loved. But I have to keep listening. This is the key to finally learning about who Eason is, because he's nothing but the sum of a f one failed relationship. <laughs> How goth. <laughs> he, he would make a great goth, but he's doing business and, and economics. He has no personality. Well, <laughs> I got her dream. She graduated from the university, went on a prestigious medical school in a different state, and then suddenly she cut off contact with me. So something happened to her, I was so worried, I turned all the way to the medical school, what I find out. She found a fellow student in a bright future and decided to be in, but you drag her down. I dragged her down with my heroin addiction, deep fried heroin, it's very nice for you. So she cut me off, chopped it right off. So that's why I get you calling on the floor for plates, sucking on Ryan Smith's sausage. <laughs> Felt bad that she dumped me, but you know, Ryan Smith sausage, that's way better than any of the other crap we can actually think about. Ethan! He cuts me off before I can say anything else. See, that's what she did to me, right off! That's what the people like, you know, all about supporting you, being there for you. Nothing supports you like deep fried heroin and a fish supper, let me tell you. Ethan finally brings his eyes up to meet my own, and he looks so angry that I flinch. I will never trust someone so easily sparks crap like you just did. Everyone has their price. The minute you find someone better, I'll be kicked to the curb or you whingy little bitch. Uh, I've had enough of that. You're 22. Your choice. Well, seeing as we're already on a bitch fist, let's carry on. Stay quiet. Defend ourselves. Okay. I, ca I can't let him think this. My feelings are genuine because I'm 22. And I know what love is because I watched a movie. I love him and I truly want to support him. Uh, Ethan, that's not how I am. I truly... Ah, uh, that's what they all say. Uh, 
Ah, sorry. Thanks for helping me. I think you're right. The Scottish fever's getting to me. Aye, aye. I should go home right there. Maybe watch a Celtic game, bit of Billy Connolly. You know, foot for the SNP like all those traitors bastards did. I'm off. Ethan! Goodbye, you stupid cow. I thought I'd know. Though I know he will be at work tomorrow. Something about his tone sounds so final. I'm afraid. How will the two of us get on from now on? A few days later. This is a few days later simulator. Welcome back. The next, the next few days at work are almost unbearable. I used to be bothered by Ethan being rude to me, but now he looks at me as though I'm worse no more than the dirt on his shoes. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him. It really hurts. I feel even worse than if he just rejected me. The worst part is I think even that Ethan's even worse off than I am. Even though he's still feverish, he shows up to work anyway and starts throwing himself into his work and even more than before. I keep fearing that he'll collapse again, but I don't know what I can say to him. Ethan's already made it clear that he doesn't want to listen to what I have to say. Spinonia, you don't look so good. Are you sure you don't want to take the day off? Liam, I'm fine. Just a little worried. About Ethan? Yeah, I think he's working himself much too hard. Uh, what is it? I, I didn't want to tell you about this. Ethan made me promise not to. Well, that proves you're a, a traitorous bitch. <laughs> I, I, I wonder what this is about. What could possibly be that Ethan wouldn't want me to know? Haha, <laughs> I guess there's lots of things that could be. I overheard him on the phone the other day. It seems he's deeply in debt, but I guess you know that already. Yeah. Well, the creditors are doing him a, are dodging him at his, are dogging him at his apartment now. I think he's behind on a payment because of that sick day he took. Oh no! That's that's not fair. He was sick. I don't think loan sharks are usually fair. That's why they're called loan sharks. I wanted to help him out, but he wouldn't hear of it. That sounds like Ethan, all right. Why won't he accept help? I think he's the type that can't admit that he needs help. He wants to shoulder all of the burdens on his own. <laughs> so, if he said something mean to you, remember that it probably hurt him to say it, too. I didn't say that Ethan did something to me. sits in awkward silence. <laughs> no, but it's pretty obvious. We've all been really worried about you two. Thanks, Liam. I'm so glad to have your support. No problem, Spinonia. Just remember, you'll get through this. Life's too short to be down on yourself all the time. You're right. I just wish Ethan would see that too. Ethan, what's going to happen to us? Not that we were ever actually in us. Is even our friendship going to be over? You know, <laughs> a few more days. Uh, apparently, although... Well, like, the time never passes, actually. We never leave this fucking room in the restaurant, either. This is the same day on the loop. A few days later, things between Ethan and me still haven't improved. He yells at me over the slightest mistakes and ignores me the rest of the time. I don't blame him. <laughs> it's an emotional roller coaster. I have no idea what to expect anymore. Those warm times we shared seem like distant memories. Memories. <laughs> I hear that the creditors are still coming after him too. I don't know what I can do for Ethan anymore. He won't even let me near him. I oh, don't blame Out of desperation, I call my uncle. I know that Ethan won't like this, but I don't think he can hate me more than he already does. I may as well try to help. Uh, got in here, Miss Monia. What the hell do you want? How well you to call me? You know, I own the restaurant, but apparently I'm never here, you know. Uncle, I have a big favor to ask you. What is it? You know, the, the Reich is, is preparing for the invasion of Poland. We haven't got much time to do other things. 
Well, he said he's suffering a lot because of a big debt. Oh. I explained the entire thing to my uncle, who, who patiently listens to everything I have to say. Oh, got in him. I see it's a problem. <laughs> that sounds like trouble, you know, but you know, you just really take care of this man. You know, maybe take him outside, suck yeah. him off, put a bullet in his head, you know, these yeah. things happen. I. I don't see much point lying about it. I really do. I know that he doesn't trust me and would probably be angry that I helped him out like this, but I want him to be able to live freely. If you pay for his debts for now, he can do so. You can take it out of my paycheck. <laughs> I wouldn't lose that. He isn't so 